Please be seated. President the court is now in session. Today the chamber will hear the testimony of a civil party that is to TTCP 273. Ms. Yee Fong, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings. Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. Mr. Nunti is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his rights to be present in the courtroom. His waiver has been delivered uh, to the uh, judge. Civil party who is to testify today, that is to TTCP 273, is present and ready to be called by the chamber. We have a reserve witness that is through TCW804 today. Through his best ability, he has no relationship by blood or by law to any other two accused, that is Noon T and Kiel Kim Horn, or to any of the civil parties admitted in this case. The witness took an oath before the Island Statue, Island Club Statue this morning. Thank you, Mr. President. President, thank you. The Chamber now decides on the request by Noon Chia. The Chamber receives a waiver from Noon Chia dated 2nd June 2015, which notes that due to his health, that is, back egg and back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his right to participate in and be present at the 2nd June 2015 hearing. He advises that his counsel advised him about the consequence of this waiver, that in no way it can be construed as a waiver of his right to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented or admitted to this court at any time during this trial. Having seen a medical report on Noon Chi by the treating doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 2nd June 2015, who notes that Noon Chi today has a severe back pain and dizziness and recommends that the chamber shall grant him his request so that he can follow the uh, proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the Chamber grants Nunchi his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs via an audio visual means. The AB unit personnel are instructed to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Noon Chi can follow the proceedings remotely. That applies for the whole day. The Chamber would like to inform the parties and the general public that during the hearing of testimony of Civil Party to TCCP 273. Klein Sukun Nara, a TTO staff, will provide support to the Civil Party during her testimony today. Ko 
Lord Officer, please uh, urge uh, the civil party to TCCT 273 as well as the PTO staff into the courtroom. President, good morning, Madam Civil Party. What is your name? Civil Party. Good morning, Mr. President. And good morning, uh, judges and prosecutors and counsel, as well as participants in the court. My name is C. Sovita, and my original birth name is Siu Moon. Liu Sing Moon. President, what is your date of birth? And uh, my uh, actual year of birth is 1964. Question, where were you born? Answer, I was born in quarter five, Phnom Penh. Question, where is your current address? Answer, I live in Sa Khmer number one, Don Phing district, Phnom Penh. Question, what is your occupation? Answer, I am a public servant at the Ministry of Interior. Question, what is your father's name? Answer, Lu Jiu Xiang is my father's name. Question, what is your mother's name? My mother answer, my mother's name is Maru Kum Jan. Question, what is the name of your husband and how many children do you have together? Answer, Mokradat Vishna is my husband's name and we have two children together. President, thank you, Madam. 
Team Sovita as a civil party before this chamber, you will be given an opportunity at the conclusion of your testimony to make a victim's impact statement if you wish to do so concerning the crimes which are alleged against the accused. Pursuant to Rule 91 bis of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber hands the floor to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties first. The chamber would also like to remind the lead co-lawyer that the uh, combined time for the lead co-lawyers for the civil parties as well as the uh, co-prosecutors is two sessions. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Madam Chair Sorita. I will put a number of questions to you this morning. My first question is for purposes of clarification. You told the President that you were born in 1964. However, in reading your identity card, which is attached to your civil party application, and I'm referring here to document D22 slash 2531. It is stated thereon that you were born in 1967. Can you clarify this matter to the chamber and explain why there is this difference between the dates on your identity card and the date of birth you have just told the president? regime, I was an orphan living with my uncle and aunt, and they changed my name in order to suit uh, their uh, family's name. But actually, I was born in 1964. However, on the official document uh, that I use at the moment, it indicates that my date of birth is 1967. And that's what happened. Je vous remercie pour Thank you. For a start, I will refer to your civil party application. The document is D22 slash 2531, and the ERN in French is 010 95559. The ERN in English is 010 38 43. The ERN in Khmer is 005, uh, by the Baker pattern, 0055 2159. In the first paragraph of this civil party application, you explain your experiences as of the 17th of April 1975, and I would like you to confirm uh, such experiences in order that we may then focus our questions on your experiences on the 1st January dam work site. I'm referring to this document and the first paragraph, you were in Phnom Penh on the 17th of April 1975 with your family. And then you were evacuated to Kandal province. And you were secondly evacuated to Kampuncham province. You then stayed in a village in the mountains called Litnom village, Moknom village, and then you were again transferred to Rusai Kelo uh, village in, uh, in Priak Prasad district, Kratia province. Can you explain to us or confirm that uh, what I've read out to you is correct? Yes, that is correct. No. On 17 April 1975, the day that Phnom fell, however, I left on the 18th, and then uh, we rested at uh, Kim Swai for about one month. Further, we were sent uh, to 
what to meet her Buddha. I was uh, rather young at the time, and we stayed at that Buddha for about a month. And then they sent about 100 to, t to 200 uh, people to Krishna district from Pungchan province. We stayed there for about uh, six months. And there was nothing on the top of the mountain. They built two rows of small huts for us to stay. And my mother was uh, contracted to malaria, and my siblings were so uh, sick. And my father was asked to use to engage in all kinds of uh, work there. My other sister also worked. They gave us half a can of uh, rice for each person. However, the soup was uh, communal, and each family had to go and get the soup, and then we can, uh, we could bring the soup back to eat in our family, but the soup was not enough. Then I tried to find a supplementary diet by looking for crab and other uh, food. I went rather further to look for supplementary food for my uh, family and my parents. And actually my parents uh, grew some vegetable, but after six months we were further evacuated to Rutaikai, Kreposop, District, Trusting Province. They built a small hut uh, for our uh, family, and it was located behind uh, the village. My father once again uh, fell sick, and he was accused of being a, a capitalist. And we were threatened and interrogated about the role of my father. I didn't tell them the truth, and I uh, told them uh, lies. Later on, I was placed in a, a child unit, and because I was a bit uh, taller than the rest, I was moved to a mobile unit, uh, working together with my elder sister. sister. I was uh, in the mobile unit for several months, and actually we did not work in the village. We were sent to work deep into the forest. I was uh, younger than the rest, but I had to do the same kind of work that uh, the other people who were older than me uh, worked. And we were located from one work site to the next. And I cannot recall the names of those uh, work sites. And there is uh, one work site at Sata village uh, that I just recalled. And in that village, all the, the people there died. We were sent to work in that uh, village, and my other sister later on was forced to, to marry. At the time, she was around 15 to 16 years old, and she didn't consent to the marriage. And my mother also didn't want uh, to my sister to get married uh, since she was young, but we did not have uh, any choice, and we were afraid that we will be treated so we finally uh, consented to the instruction. And when my sister got married, I was sent to a mobile unit at the first January work site. And I stayed there and worked there for about uh, three months. And I was asked to stay behind the Barai Jondai Pagoda before they could build a long sleeping uh, building. And it took about one month before that uh, building uh, was completed. Okay. Merci, Madame la Partie Civile. Je vous propose. Thank you. Madam Civil Party, may I request you to stop here in order for me to be able to put questions that will enable you to tell us what happened after you were sent to the first January dam work site. It is important for us to understand clearly why you left and uh, why you were assigned to work on the dam work site. Can you tell us as briefly as possible, if it is possible, 
at what time you left to the uh, work site of the first January dams and why? At that time, my elder sister had uh, married already, and since I was in a mobile unit with her, she was allowed to stay in the village after she got married, and I decided to go to work far in a mobile unit in the hope that uh, because I was active on behalf of my family, so they would not mistreat my uh, family members. And if I were not to go to the first January Dam work site, then I would be sent to maybe another work site further away from uh, the village. However, upon my return, I learned that my other sister was mistreated. She was deprived of food, and my uh, parents were also mistreated. I felt hopeless. I felt sick again when I saw what happened, and my mother begged me not to go back, but I told her if I were to stay here, I would die anyway, because during the 1977, a lot of people had been killed or died. I thank you. Please tell the chamber how old you were when you were transferred to the first January dam work site. President, uh, Madame Sivopati, please observe the microphone. Sivopati, I was 11 years old or 12 years old, if I recall it uh, correctly. If you uh, count the age according to the, my uh, method, I was 12, but for the, uh, from the exact date of birth, I was around 11, and I was the youngest member in the mobile unit. Thank you. I would like to read out to you a passage of your the supplementary document you gave the ECTC, and it is document E307-6.1.6, ERN in French, 0103-0294, ERN in English, 0106-3819, ERN in Khmer, 01 Zero zero three three five seven. This is what you stated in that document, and I would like you to react to what you said. You are explaining why you left to go and work at the work first January dam work site. Let me quote what you stated. That was a real sacrifice for my family, going to work there. I told myself that if someone in my family accepted to go and work in that very far off work site and conditions were very difficult. The committee would have no reason to blame my family. Can you explain to the chamber this idea that it was a sacrifice for your family to have to go and work at that dam work site? that although I was uh, younger, I would do everything for my family so that they could be in peace. And I do not mind whether I would be exhausted from hard work. And that was uh, one of the primary reasons for me to be part of the uh, mobile unit. And it was my expectation that my uh, family members would be left alone when I went to work uh, far uh, in the uh, mobile unit. And I could not understand uh, whether my decision at the time was a correct one. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Please tell the chamber who accompanied you from your village to the first January dam work site. Were you with other 
Yunus members or people from other villages. Can you explain to us who traveled with you and how that trip unfolded? Correctly, there were about uh, less than 10 of us, including the 17 other uh, people and the best people and other people from other villages in Greater South District went uh, to the work site. We went there by a motorboat and we disembarked at Stung Trong. Then a truck came to pick us up. Then other people would do the same. And then we would uh, be uh, dropped off at the Kampung Pong. Do you recall how long after your trip from the village, um, what is the distance from your village to the first January work site? What is the distance? I recall that I stayed overnight at the Stung Trong, but it took us about uh, three days and a night before we arrived at the destination. And we only stayed overnight at Stung Trong, and the second night we slept at the Kampung Mo. <laughs> Thank you. You also said in your account that you took a boat and then you boarded trucks. Do you remember how many people they were in the boat or in the trucks? Were there many of you to travel to uh, the dam? There were uh, quite a number of us and uh, it was a pretty large uh, motor boat, not a small uh, boat. There were about uh, 30 to 40 of us on that uh, motorboat, but I can recall the exact number. And when a truck came to pick us up, it means that we had to, to get onto the truck and it was uh, a full load. But I can recall how many uh, people were put onto a truck. I can recall that uh, from each village there were about 10 of us and then until the boat uh, was full, then uh, we would uh, depart, and then another boat uh, would pick up uh, other people from other villages. Thank you. When you arrived on the, the dam work site, as of when did you start working? for a little bit only, then we were asked to go in uh, to, to go to the work site. On the first day, they, fam they let us uh, familiarize ourselves with the locations and with the tools, the, uh, the holes, for example, and we started uh, working the next day. It's from my recollection, and we were not allowed uh, to rest for long. We actually could rest only for the remainder of the uh, traveling day. So when we arrived, we then had uh, to prepare uh, carrying a basket and hole. And we rested, could rest a little bit only after our uh, lunch, and we uh, started working. That is my best recollection of what happened upon our arrival. Thank you. Can you describe the place, the place where you worked?
which is at uh, the current 70 Nut River, and uh, that canal was called the first temporary uh, canal. Immediately go from Phnom Penh, they will reach uh, 70 Nut River first. However, the location that I were uh, was far from the main road, and uh, the Sinat River ran through to uh, Simria. And the airbag site was far from the sleeping quarter. Thank you. I will get back to that later. Do you remember when approximately, in which year, and during which period of the year, you arrived on the dam worksite? sister was forced to marry, uh, it was either in December or uh, January next year, and I was not the first batch which was sent to work at the first January dam work site. I was the second uh, batch, so I was, uh, I went around uh, January, and after three months, I returned, which was uh, around the Khmer New Year. So allow me to say that I went there around late January or early February, and I worked there for uh, three months. Thank you. You also said that the place where you were working was far from the place where you would sleep. Can you provide us with more details on the place where you would sleep? It was about one kilometer or two kilometers from the work place, from the workplace. It was a bit quite close to the workplace at that time. And later, I was uh, asked to sleep in another place, which was about five kilometers away from the work site. I had to wake up in the early morning to go to work. And after we completed our uh, work at one particular place, we were moved to a further area. When you say that you had work elsewhere, can you tell the chamber the way you would move about on the work site during these three months? Would you always go work at the same place? How did things develop uh, with your work? Uh, answer. For example, they measured the land for us to work on for the period of half a month or one month. And after we completed the work at that particular place, we move, we would move uh, further, and we had to clear the bushes so that uh, we can work on. And we had to move from one place to another, and it was becoming further and further from our sleeping quarter. Everyone was in the same situation, not only my people in my village. Thank you. You were speaking about clearing work. Can you tell us what other kind of work you did during those three months at uh, the dam work site? Answer. During the three-month period, I was asked to carry dirt and soil, and for uh, male workers, they dug the earth. I was told to carry the earth uh, from the canal, and I had to carry it to the dam site. 
So this is this was my uh, routine work at that time. Sometimes I have to go and uh, fetch water for the older because I was younger than the others at that time. I would go and fetch the water for everyone to drink. There was a kitchen or dining hall where the water was kept and I had to go there and collect the water. It was a bit away from our work site. No one was allowed to go individually to that kitchen to bring the water to eat. And as I said, at times I was asked to go and collect the water. There was queue, so I used queue to uh, collect the water for some workers there to drink. Thank you. Now I would like you to explain to us how your unit would operate. How many people were there in your unit? And were you the youngest or not? Can you provide us with a bit more details about the unit uh, in which you worked back then? Thanks, sir. From my rough estimate, I believe I cannot give you the exact estimate. There were hundreds of us in the unit. That is the unit in Prasap district. And there were many squatters. I could not give you an exact number of figure of the workers. Perhaps there were around 100 workers in my unit. And uh, what is your last question? I do not recall. Yes, I'll get back to that later. Was your unit made up of different groups or subgroups, or were you all working together? Thanks, sir. In Prasap district, units were divided, and after that, uh, there were subgroups and groups. And base people would be in charge of those groups and subgroups. As I said, uh, chief of the unit, subgroup, and groups uh, were base people. Thank you. The question I asked you earlier was uh, if you were the youngest or among the youngest in your subgroup, and if you remember the average age of the workers in your subgroup, and more generally speaking, in your unit, uh, if you do remember that, of course. and their age uh, were below 30 years old. And uh, most of them were teens, 16, 17. And some other were, late were in late 20s. I uh, did not see m older people, and I was uh, one youngest uh, person among uh, those people. Thank you. When you tell us that you were among the youngest, uh, does that mean that you saw other people who were as old as you in your subgroup or in your unit, or were you the only one who was still a child back then? the youngest in my unit and people like were rather people uh, said that I was uh, too young at that time I should have stayed uh, with my mother instead so people 
were saying like this around, and uh, I uh, was asked whether I uh, would stop breastfeeding at that time. Thank you. You explained a bit earlier the kind of tasks you were involved in at the work site. Were you doing the same work as the young adults and the adults in your unit, or were you given a different kind of work because you were younger? Okay. Answer. People think that I was too young at that time, so the Earth carrier was uh, smaller than the other. And uh, usually I was asked to go and uh, collect the water for workers. They uh, did not uh, put earth full in my uh, basket and ask for elderly or elder people. Uh, they would uh, carry it full of basket. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Did you have to meet certain quota? And if yes, can you tell the court how all of this was organized? Answer. There was no a specific uh, quota for me, but the quota was set uh, for the group. So I was uh, put in that group and help uh, carry earth. Vous souvenez -vous du quota? Do you remember the quota that was set for your group? Answer, I do not recall it. I only recall that uh, the land was measured for workers and the district was divided into song cuts and the quota was set uh, for workers to complete in a particular period of time. That's what I knew at that time. Did you feel any kind of pressure back then in order uh, to meet the quota that was set or were you somewhat uh, a bit in a different situation because you were so young. Answer, I think that there was pressure on me and I was forced to work. I uh, did not take care of any other matters but working. We were not allowed to speak to each other. I mean, the 17 April were not allowed to speak to each other. Some of them complained about the labor, and uh, they said, so what the society at that time was, because uh, they were told to conduct a hard labor, they complained at times. I was hard working at that time because I did not want uh, any blame on me. I was uh, working hard at the 1st January dam site and one time I collapsed. Thank you. Can you describe your regular days and your working schedule. When did you start working at what time? Until what time did you have any breaks? And until what time did you work in the evening? Answer. I, we work in a far place in the morning shift. So I have to wake up early in the morning to go to work. And when the day broke, I was there already at the work site. And we rested 
during lunch time for a brief moment, and after that we would hear the bell ringing for us to resume our work. The rest time was about five, uh, 30 minutes. It was just a brief moment. During that rest time, we had lunch and took a small, a brief rest. And uh, in the afternoon, we also worked, and uh, we would return at our sleep, sleeping quarter at around 9 or 10. Actually, at uh, my sleeping quarters, there were no water there for us to uh, wash ourselves. We had to go to villages, uh, to the well, to clean ourselves. Thank you. Now I would like to get back to the schedule. Earlier you said uh, that uh, your sleeping quarters were about five kilometers from the dam. Can you be a bit more specific about that? Can you tell us if you remember uh, what time you would get up in the morning? You said that you would get up very early and how long it was necessary for you to walk from your sleeping quarters to the dam. Do you remember this information still? Thanks, sir. I recall that I woke up at around 4.30 or 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we took a very long time to go to arrive at our workplace. I do not remember how long it uh, would take, but we had to spend much time uh, traveling to our workplace. From the national road at Kampong Small to my work site, it took a long period of time to arrive there, and that place was called Pum Knaut or Chen La Tu. And once again, I had to spend much time traveling to work. Was there a specific way you would follow be between uh, the uh, dam and the place where you would take your lunch break? Yeah. It was not far from the work site to the place where we act. It was a short distance. I could not give you the estimate. It was about 100 meters from the work site, or it was less than that. Thank you. You also said earlier that you would stop working at between 9 in the evening and 10 in the evening. Was that the time when you would stop working or was that the time when you arrived in your sleeping quarters? Do you remember that or is all this a, a bit too vague in your memory? I'm sorry. Sometime we stopped uh, working at 9 or 10 p.m. And after that, we had to return to our sleeping quarter. I recall that in the evening, uh, we had a brief period of rest. And after that, we resumed our work until 9 or 10 p.m. We would arrive at our sleeping quarter at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. I do not know about other villages working hours. During uh, the bright season, uh, we would uh, work at night. And torch uh, was uh, used to light our working uh, site, our w workplace.
thank you. When you said that during the dry season you would work at night, what do you mean by that exactly? Does this mean after 10 o'clock in the evening? And if yes, how often would you work at night during the dry season? period we had to work in uh, the dry and rainy season we had the same assignment during the, the rainy season I was not told to go and do the transplanting and uh, we had to work under the rain as well there was no rest uh, during the rainy season order to make things a bit clearer, when you speak about night work, what does that mean for you? It, it was as of what time and until what time? Answer. The night shift started from 6 or 7 p.m. We started a work from uh, 6 or 7 p.m. until 9 or 10 p.m. That for night shift. And just to make things completely clear, did this night work only occur during the dry season or also during the rainy season? So what happened? Question, please wait, uh, Madam Civil Party. You may not repeat, uh, Mr. Ko. Um, I, un I understand. Good morning, Mr. President, uh, Your Honours. Um, I think an objection is in place because uh, we heard Civil Party testify earlier that she only worked for a period of three months um, and that she stopped at around Khmer New Year, which is around um, mid April. And then it is indeed true that the civil parties offered evidence that she also worked in the rainy season. Um, however, I think um, the civil party lead lawyer should first clarify um, that um, difference in testimony. Um, it is my understanding that uh, the rainy season starts about uh, May um, and then goes up until October. So it's either working three months from January to Khmer New Year or also in the rainy season and then it's not possible to work only for three months. So I think that should be first clarified um, by question. I simply wanted the civil party to react to, to what she herself had said because it seems important for her to specify that she was working during the dry season. So I simply wanted her to react to what she had testified herself regarding the fact that she would work uh, at night during the dry season. So I don't know if this is clear, but the civil, but M Madam Civil Party, can you please tell us if you worked at night during the dry season? Yeah, Answer, yes, I worked uh, in the dry season. My apology, I I said that I arrived at the first uh, January dam site uh, in early January or February. And uh, I said I was uh, working there for a period of three months, but perhaps I uh, stopped uh, working there in uh, perhaps May. I was uh, talking in general that uh, during uh, that uh, regime, so everyone had to work even in uh, dry season, both in dry season and uh, rainy season. Well, then to get to the um, real gist of my question, do you remember having worked on the work site during the rainy season? That may be towards the end of your stay at the work site. Do you remember, therefore, having worked during the rainy season? Answer. I uh, 
do not have a good uh, memory. There was rain uh, when I was working there, and as I said, I had to work even in the rain. Thank you. Did you have any days of rest during the three months when you worked on the uh, One January Dam book site? I did not have any rest. We were allowed to have a one day off uh, during the Khmer New Year time. There was a meeting on that day and uh, there was instruction that there was instruction in perhaps other places or villages that there should be two days off during the time that uh, people were working but in my village uh, I had um, no resting time thank you you said a bit earlier on that you fainted on the work site. So, how exhausted were you that day? And, uh, I was so exhausted on that day. I did not have enough sleep and did not have my fear. I fainted. I was ill as well at that time. I was carried away to my sleeping quarter after I fainted. Thank you. What were your food rations during those three months? Were they still the same or they changed during that period? Can you please explain to us what you ate during that period? And, uh, in that three month period, food ration in my village in Karachay was comparably good. And when I went to fetch water for workers, I also asked people about food ration. And uh, for my food ration, there was a uh, soup and uh, cooked rice. And we also had a uh, pumpkin for our food. People in village in my village would bring uh, those uh, vegetables to our workplace. And uh, we could not have uh, food as uh, much as we wanted. Uh, food ration was uh, given to us. And uh, on every 10 day, we would have uh, the dessert, that is the stick, uh, sticky rice. And during the Khmer New Year time, there was a, there were two pieces of uh, ice and uh, those two pieces uh, were put in a big uh, bucket and uh, it was so hot at that time and the water even we had uh, s that two pieces of ice uh, was not cold. Thank you. You stated a while ago that you were taken ill. Can you explain whether you regularly fell ill on the work site? And also explain whether that was the only time when you fell sick. And uh, I fainted only one time. I was not often ill. And 
during the time that I uh, framed it, I felt uh, these disease. And every time uh, I uh, would go back to work after I uh, got recovered from my uh, minor illness. And uh, after I framed it, after two days, I uh, went back to work. And when I fell sick, there was a medic to treat me, and the medic was not well trained. I was given a rabbit dropping medicines to drink for my illness. I recall that when I was sick on that day, I was given a tablet or a piece of medicine from a man taken from town, and I could uh, recover. As for the rabbit dropping medicine uh, given by the medic of the Khmer Rouge, uh, I did not uh, drink it. There was no blood test uh, when uh, we fell sick. I uh, do not really understand uh, how the medic uh, which was, uh, who was not trained uh, treated us. Thank you. Did any other members of your group fall sick during the three months when you were working at the work site? Answer. Yes. Some uh, got sick and they had a coin massage at the site of the uh, work site. And after the coin massage, they went back to work. Some people, uh, when they felt sick, they would uh, go and take a short rest. For those who were seriously ill, they were told to take a rest near the uh, work site and for the sick who could not recover, they would be sent to the village or to the hospital in the pagoda. At one time, I was uh, seriously ill and I was sent to uh, the uh, medical unit at the pagoda. Can you describe to us that medical unit at the pagoda? Is that the hospital you've been referring to? Uh, Answer. It was not during the time that I was working at the first January work site. Later, when I was assigned to work at another place, I fell seriously, seriously sick, and I was sent to a medical unit in the pagoda. It was in a dining hall of that pagoda. There was traditional uh, healer in that pagoda, and uh, the healer would use the herb to cook and boil so that uh, there was a uh, boil the water for us to drink. I had dysentery on that at that time. And uh, at that time there was a water looked like uh, the uh, beverage uh, water and uh, the uh, liquid was put inside that water and uh, I uh, received uh, the injection shot from uh, that uh, bottle. Je vous remercie. Thank you. I would like us to return to the first general objection. Do you remember whether workers in your group or unit were sent to the hospital? Is that something you do remember? I am indeed 
which is heading to the first January of January, so. Lang? Then going what we can consider to the east, the person will be sent back to the village and communes where he or she came from for the uh, treatment of there. However, it seems that uh, no one from my village became seriously ill, but it happened to other workers from other villages, and those people were sent back to their respective village. At the work sites, there was no proper medical unit uh, where people could stay for treatment. Thank you. Do you know whether some of the workers you've referred to returned to their villages or their communes of origin and whether they returned to work on the 1st January dam work site? No, they never returned because the work period there was set only for three months and I never saw them return. Thank you. Did you attend any meetings while you were at the first January dam work site? Je vais je vais répéter la question. Je crois que vous ne l'avez pas. I will repeat the question because I believe you didn't hear it. Did you attend meetings? held at the 1st January dam work site. I do not know whether you are receiving any interpretation. Can you hear me, Madame Civil Party? Right. Let me repeat my question. Did you attend meetings while you were working on the 1st January dam work site? Yes, I did. I attended the meeting at the unit level, at the district level, and sometimes there was a mass meeting where we all attended. Je vais vous poser du coup quelques courtes. I will ask short follow-up questions on those meetings. Who conducted and chaired those meetings? I do not know them. They were referred to as uh, senior cadres who came to chair the meeting. They represented Ong Kha, you know, or they represented the party, and I did not know who Ong Kha was or who uh, the party was. I did not see any of the senior leaders like the ones in the courtroom here. I did not know who were the leaders of the uh, regime at the time. I only knew the faces of the uh, uh, village chief, the commune chief, or some uh, cadres in the uh, local area. But I did not know who the actual leaders of the regime were, as I did not see them while I was working at uh, the dam work site. Thank you. How frequently were those meetings held? Were they held during the day or during the working day? Most of the time, the meeting was conducted at the end of the working hours. Only when it was uh, necessary or urgent, the meeting would be uh, conducted during the working hours. And usually, meetings uh, were held rather frequently at various levels, for example, at the group level, or at the unit level, or at the village uh, level. As for the mass meeting, it only happened uh, very 
rarely, but the meetings at the group level happen rather frequently. Concernant les réunions de regarding the group meetings for a start, can you explain to us what you were told during those meetings? What messages were given to the workers? For this kind of a small uh, meeting, the main purpose was to push us to work as hard as possible in order to finish the work uh, before other villages or uh, communes working at uh, the work site. During uh, the region, the theory that they used at the time was uh, self-criticism. It means we had to vote uh, one another who was uh, our work uh, colleagues in order to catch uh, the mistakes, in order uh, to criticize during the meeting. And they also use the phrase that uh, they had uh, many eyes as uh, pineapples. And another word that I recall, uh, they use that the, the, the moment or the momentum was a historical will. And if you interfere with your leg or your arms, it will crush you. And they also use another a slogan from my recollection that is the the great leap forward, and another one was uh, to keep it, you know, gains to lose. It's, it's also uh, no gain. And th these are the typical uh, words and uh, slogans uh, they use at the time. And if one was uh, to fall sick, the person will be accused of uh, pretending to be sick. It means, in general, after they, they took control of the regime, we had to conform to uh, what uh, they need. They, we all had to get rid of the uh, capitalism uh, nature in ourselves. President interrupts. The time is uh, convenient for a short break. We take a break now and resume at 10.30. Court officer, please assist the civil party at the waiting room for the civil parties and the witnesses during the break and invite her and the uh, PTO staff back into the courtroom at 10.30. The court is now in recess. Thank you.